Hi team, this is Chris Abram from GoMath. Today we're going to work on number 28 on the FTC Elementary Teacher Certification Exam. It's a great problem because it, it sort of combines ideas of number sense and operations and algebra. So let's take a look. Number 28. On the first day of school, a group of students collected two soda cans. On the second day, the students collected four soda cans. On the third day, they collected eight. And on the fourth, they collected 16. Each day, they collected twice the number on the previous day. How many soda cans will they collect on the ninth day? Well, one thing you may notice is a pattern. 2, 4, 8, 16. So we should start writing that pattern. 2, 4, 6, I'm sorry, 2, 4, 8, 2, 4, 8, 16. And these correspond with the days that are there. So there are nine days. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the first day is two soda cans. Second day is four. Third day is eight. Fourth day is 16. We're trying to find the ninth. If we were just looking at this like as a regular number sense and operation problem, we would just want to find out what operation are we doing, and it tells us here we're going to be doubling it. We're going to find out the operation that we do to get from 2 to 4. So to get from 2 to 4, I double it, I multiply by 2. So every term, I'm going to continue to double it to get to the next term. That gets me to the 4, that gets me to the 8, that's getting me to the 16. So if I want to find the, the ninth term, well, I'm going to figure out what the fifth term is, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, and ninth. So if I continue this pattern, I double it again, I'm going to get 32, double it again, get 64, double it again, get 128, double it again, there's a 2 there. Uh, we're going to get 256. What happens when I double that one one more time? 256 times 2. What is that? 512? So just by using this, applying, uh, doubling each um, term, you could get to the 512 and you could get to the answer. Pretty straightforward number sense and operation problem. Yes. But at the same time, you could also think of this in terms of algebra. And when you think of algebra, the, you want to it's always whenever you see a pattern or a sequence. So here there definitely is a pattern. And you know, from one term to the next you're doubling it. We could have represented this pattern in an input output chart. X is the the ter, the uh, the days, right? X could have been represented as the day number and y as the number of cans. If we wanted to think wanted to record this pattern on the input output chart, we could have followed the same uh, same process on day 1, it's 2 cans, on day 2, it's 4, on day 3, it's 8, on day uh, 4, it's 16. Now if I taking an algebraic approach, I could say, well, what's the relationship between x and y? It looks like the number of cans that you get, y, that's supposed to be a y, the number of cans is equal to whatever the number of days are squared. Does that make sense? If we have one day, one day, uh, sorry, let me, uh, let me actually fix that. It's not the number of days squared. It's the number two raised to the x power. Ah, there we go. That makes more sense. Now this is a much harder uh, or a little bit more complicated uh, equation. Than, but what it's saying is the relationship between x and y, the number of days to the number of cans is, you're going to take 2 and square it, raise it to that power. Now 2 to the first power is 2 cans. Um, 2 to the second power is 4 cans. 2 to the third power is 8 cans. So we get this, you know, a little bit harder uh, function here going on. It's called a power function. It's very cool, and it, it's the algebraic uh, equation that represents this pattern. So 
in this seemingly easy pattern where we could, we, or seemingly easy number sense and operation pattern where we just multiply by 2 to get to the 512, we could also, if we dug a little bit deeper, create an input output chart and come up with the algebraic equation to represent this pattern. And then we could go on into much more advanced math. So if you dig a little deeper on these problems, you'll get to some of the more intermediate level math. And that's why I want you to study them. Know the basics. That way you could push a little further if you needed to. All right, team, I hope you found this helpful. This is Chris Abram from Go Math. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi team, I want to encourage all teachers that need some extra help on the math to check out one of the Go Math workshops. We're holding them in Massachusetts and in Florida to help teachers uh, get ready for the teacher certification exams. Check it out. I'm sure you'll find it very helpful. Mm -hmm.